In order to create an AWS account, go to aws.amazon.com and click on create an AWS account. Enter your email address, password, choose an AWS account name. This could be just alphabets or alphanumeric or can also have symbols in it. I'll keep it to a very simple one. Then click continue. And here you have two options, professional or personal. There's absolutely no difference in the features or functions between professional and personal. So go ahead and select whichever is appropriate. The only difference is when you select personal, you don't have to fill in the company name field. So enter all the information. Select this checkbox to agree to the terms and conditions and click create account and continue. Now here you need to enter your credit card or debit card details. This information is mandatory for creating an AWS account. However, you will be charged only if you exceed the free tier limits, which you can actually find by going to this AWS free tier limits link. And it also says when you submit your payment information, you will be charged a dollar to your credit card for verification and it will be removed later. So just be aware of this. I'll enter my debit card details and click verify and add. Now get your cell phone number verified using SMS or phone call. Now here you need to select the plan. All the plans including the basic plan has all the services. The main difference between the free plan and the paid plans is that with the paid plans you will get support. So we will use the basic plan which is free. You may choose to personalize your account by selecting a role and interest but I'm going to leave it for now and click sign into the console. Enter the email address, password and click sign in. And this will launch the AWS Management Console. Now let's explore this console a little bit. On the top navigation bar, you can see services. And if you click that, you can see the list of all services provided by AWS. Then you have resource groups, which is basically a way to group and organize the AWS resources that you have. An AWS resource is basically any entity in AWS that you can work with, such as a virtual machine, an Amazon S3 bucket, a Lambda function, etc. So if you click saved groups, you won't see anything in here because we haven't created any resource group yet. At any given point of time, if you want to go back to the management console homepage, simply click this AWS icon here. Then this bell icon is part of the AWS Personal Health Dashboard which will show you alerts and notifications related to AWS health events. Next we have this drop down which says your account name and it shows your account and billing related information and settings. So if you click my account, you can see the account settings, contact information, alternate contact, configure security challenge questions etc. But more importantly if you scroll down to the very bottom you see the option to close the account. So if you want to close this AWS account, you just need to agree to all these terms by checking them and click the close account button. All right, now if we scroll up again, you can see there are options related to cost management, billing and payment here. We are not going to go through all of these options in this course, but I would like to point out just a few important and useful options here. First, the cost explorer. This will provide you reporting and analytics on your AWS costs. So I strongly recommend you to enable it by clicking this Enable Cost Explorer button. This will not only help you to review the charges on a daily basis, but also gives you a forecast of the estimated spending. Then if you go to the bills, you should be able to see your monthly invoices here. Next, if you go to the billing preferences, you can select this option, receive PDF invoice by email, and you will receive the PDF invoice on your primary email every month. And if you enable this option, receive free tier usage alerts, you will receive alert emails when your usage exceeds 85% of the free tier limit for a specific service. These alerts 
by default will go into your primary email address. However, if you want to receive it on an additional email address, you can enter it here. Finally, we have this drop down to select the region. Region is basically a geographic area where the AWS services are hosted. Each region has multiple locations called availability zones, and these availability zones are connected through low latency links. However, each region is totally independent and they are not connected to each other. As of today, there are 22 regions and 69 availability zones. So you can select the region where you want to host a particular service from this drop-down menu. The billing console is not specific to a region and that is why you see global here. So if I just go back to the management console homepage, you can see the list of regions here. Alright, in the next video we will discuss about the pricing model of Amazon Connect.